this is uh, Green and Eggs and Hacks, so if you're in the wrong spot, uh, you might want to go find the other session, but uh, I'm Nibble, and um, yeah, so this was my experience uh, taking my daughter to DEF CON. So really quick, um, who's been to DEF CON? Okay, so we got a couple of people. Who has kids? Okay, so everybody at least has kids. Okay, so <laughs> I said this is an okay session for you then because if you haven't done either of those things, then uh, yeah, that, that, this might not be terribly interesting. So a uh, quick formality, uh, my real name, Jason Revere, aka Nibble, uh, security engineer for CompuNet, um, fantastic place to work. They see a lot of value in this sort of community involvement um, and uh, I really appreciate all that they do for, for the community and letting us kind of do crazy stuff like this. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, that's up there. Uh, Nibble.tech is the website. Uh, I've been involved with DC801 now uh, for quite some time. Uh, was one of the early members of the 801 Labs. Uh, I'm also a father of two lovely young ladies um, uh, who are currently seven and five. So <clears throat> it's not going to go well for my clicker. Okay, so um, Hacker Summer Camp, right? Um, this is actually at B-Sides. Um, black hat parties, uh, you know, definitely not seeing a lot of kids here. DC801 party Saturday night, not seeing a lot of kids here either. So who in their right mind <laughs> would want to take children to this sort of event, right? Uh, who, you know, and, and I struggled with this for a long time because they have DEF CON kids, right? They have activities for the kids there. Um, and I didn't want to be that bad right? <laughs> uh, hopefully everybody knows who that is. Um, but, uh, you know, why is it important that, that, that kids are exposed to this culture? So I didn't want to be that guy, um, but it was two years ago, I was waiting for the Tuscany bus uh, from B-Sides to the DEF CON venue, and I was chatting with somebody there, and he happens to be the guy who's organized uh, B-Sides Austin, and he's like, man, you got to bring your kid. This is, this is the environment for kids. I'm like, you know, tell me more. I, you know, I'm, I'm curious. I want to know. And he's like, they, they need to see this sort of thing. They're naturally curious. They want to do these things that we, as a community, we as hackers do, right? And, and one of the other key things is we're not the bad guys. Despite what you see on TV, despite what you read in the news, this community and hackers are not the bad people. Those are criminals. We're hackers. And our kids need to know the difference. Very important. And, of course, as any parent knows, our kids, that's what we're investing with, right? They're our future. So how can we, this, this community, this, this, this uh, environment, this way of thinking that is hacking, right, is hackers, um, how can we uh, empower our children to understand, or understand this properly and then, you know, take up the rein and run with it uh, for the future, so... That was important to me. Um, so so kind of get down to the, the logistics here. What, when you decide, okay, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna take, take my kid to DEF CON. What is that, what do I need? What do I need to take? Um, I wish I had known this. <laughs> um, cash, cash at the DEF CON venue is extremely important. Um, when you have your kid there, um, most of the concessions at DEF CON, um, they're not taking credit cards. There's no, there's no such thing as credit cards at DEF CON, right? You need cash. So when, when your seven-year-old is hungry and cranky and you forgot to bring snacks and drinks, you need to be able to pay for those sorts of things and not rely on the kindness of strangers for cash. So <laughs> um, patience is huge, right? Remember. When you're, uh, when you're there with your kids, um, understand that this is new to them as well, right? And, and I mean, as parents, we know patience is, is a core value of parenting, but uh, just, just know that this is, this is a very unique experience. Um, for you as a parent, 
So be patient with yourself. Know that maybe you're not going to be perfect. Who is, right? But, uh, but then also with your kids. And, and try to look at DEF CON through their eyes, right? Not just because they're lower than us, but, you know, maybe avoid certain areas that you know are, are not appropriate for kids, like uh, Hacker Jeopardy, for instance. Any of the late night activities, probably not a good spot for the kids. Um, and, and going back to the patience bit, I mean, this is, this is, you're dedicating your experience to them. If you've been to DEF CON without your kids in the past, that was for you, right? Or that was for your, your community that you're involved with. This is, is a different experience. Um, and, and in that, in that mindset, have proper expectations. So that's the, the, um, DEF CON party shirt. My, my five-year-old grabbed it when I received it last year. Um, so, um, take your time. Uh, and wear a parent hat. Don't let your kid run around crazy, you know, uh, and again, go to these sorts of events that maybe, uh, are inappropriate. Uh, so, so remember, it's parenting time. It's not time to just goof off with your friends, which is what DEF CON is when you're not. Or no, I'm sorry. It's a very serious security conference. So, <laughs> um, uh, breaks are extremely important. Take breaks. Leave the conference area. Go to the pool if you have access to a pool where you're staying down in Vegas. That that's huge, right? Um, and and you know, just remember what it's like to be a kid in, in these sorts of new environments. Excuse me. So what, what is there for kids to do there? Um, well, there's Roots Asylum. Roots Asylum is this magical conference within a conference, right? It's also known as DEF CON Kids, is what it used to be known as. They rebranded it as Roots Asylum a few, a few years ago. Um, what sort of activities are the kids doing in there? Well, what's key is as an adult, you're stopped at the door. If you don't have child supervision going into RootsCon, you're not allowed in. You need your kid with you. So, so going back to you know years past, I was like, oh wow, I really want to check this out. But they're like, yeah, no, dude, you're not allowed in there because that's kind of creepy and weird. Um, so, so yeah, you need a kid with you. Um, but they're going to be into um, crypto puzzles, uh, what I like to call tabletop cryptography. So. Uh, pen and paper cryptography type stuff. Um, there's hardware hacking in there, so you know uh, soldering and 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 you know fun fun activities around that. And this the the cool thing is is that there's there's adult volunteers that are kind of paired up with each of these these exercises, kind of uh, you know giving instruction to the kids that haven't done that sort of thing before, you know helping out with uh, uh, the activities. They have a CTF in there. And the talks are top notch. I mean, you know, if you like getting the perspective from some of the bigger names in the security field, they'll come in and they'll give um, those sorts of talks to the kids. So, uh, and they're they're extremely entertaining, right? Uh, even for adults. So, and uh, you know, it really starts to spawn those great ideas. If you remember, like your first talks at DEF CON, you know, they they can be extremely interesting and exciting and, and hopefully invigorating you for the next year uh, to, to uh, inspire uh, any activities that you're, you're interested in. So, so the other thing that's interesting there is the Social Engineering Village does a CTF on Saturday just for the kids. So Social Engineering Village is a sub-village within, within uh, the, the, the con. And if, the guy there is uh, Chris Hagney and uh, Michelle, whose last name I'm forgetting. They are the organizers, the main people that do like uh, socialengineer.org, um, the, the podcast, an amazing, amazing uh, group of people. They've got a bunch of volunteers that are helping. And these are all the kids that had uh, uh, wanted to do the CTF Saturday morning. So it's Saturday morning, first thing. So no partying Friday night, Dad, right? <laughs> you got to be there bright and early. Um, and the age range for, for uh, so I, I should mention this, uh, Roots, uh, the age range is kind of recommended 6 to 16. Uh, 17 and up, they can pretty much go do DEF CON, right? But, but Roots, 6 to 16. The SECTF uh, for kids is, is 6 to 13. 
is the cutoff. Um, so if you're 13, you can't, you can't do this, right? So, so they team up um, uh, kids that um, you know, maybe uh, can mentor the younger kids. So my, my seven-year-old's here in the, in the right uh, corner in the pink, and her teammate's behind her, um, and her teammate had done this uh, two other times. So this was her third time doing the CTF, and my daughter was the youngest one there. So, um, so she, she uh, had no idea you know, what she was getting into, but her partner was this amazing mentor. She came out, she you know, knew what kind of to expect, but um, you know, really was, was pivotal to it being successful for my daughter. And I'll dive into a little bit of more of what they were doing, um, but, but the CTF is essentially, I'd almost say, uh, at least this, this year, and I, having not done it before, uh, I'm assuming it's pretty similar, um, they, it's almost like a treasure hunt, right? They, they start with an initial clue, they give the kids instructions, um, you know, kind of general idea on um, resources that they might need on paper, uh, so they don't need a, a, a smartphone or anything, right? They don't need internet access. They give them anything that they might need to complete any of the challenges. And then they give it to them in this backpack. They get a t-shirt. You know, it's just this wonderful, uh, good time. And then they line everybody up when they're still happy first thing in the morning. And, <laughs> and everybody smiles. And, they, and then, they, then they set them off to, to go do stuff. So um, what was involved, right? Um, the first challenge was a, um, a passphrase Caesar cipher. Uh, so um, tabletop crypto, again, what I, you know, pen and paper crypto. And it was, it was uh, I'm going to give away some of the secrets so that you guys kind of know what, what uh, as an, an adult, I'm like, oh, I love this. But you can't help, right? <laughs> so I'm just watching and I'm like, oh, oh this is great. Yay. <laughs> but um, uh, so, you know, the... Um, uh, Michelle, when she let them out, she said uh, um, you know, something like working for Chris Hagney is, 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 a bit of a, is a bit of a mind trick or something like that. And it was like this one word at the end, like mind trick, it was, was really weird. So um, the instructions that they got, which the, they were reviewing there, um, talked about Caesar ciphers and passphrase Caesar ciphers specifically. And it, watching two kids reverse engineer a crypto code is, is, is you know, watching your seven-year-old is mind-blowing, right? I mean, this is an amazing experience. Um, but uh, so they, they, uh, they went through, they figured that part out, but the, the volunteers are there to kind of give them a little bit of guidance, right? So they didn't just come to reverse engineering on their own. They, they had to go and they had to ask for help from the volunteers every once in a while. And they wouldn't give them the answers, but they'd be like, hey, you might want to try this. Like, the letter E tends to come up a lot when you're looking at, uh, you know, a, a, a sentence, right? So maybe if you look at this code, this long string of characters, you know, the letter J, uh, you know, appears a lot in there. Well, what if you thought that was an E? You know, and, and so kind of helping them through the first step, and then they have to take it and run. Um, lock picking is another huge element there, and it's a great thing that kids can, uh, can you know, kind of pick up and, and get started on and work on ahead of time as well. Um, we've got some amazing lock picking resources here in the community. Lonnie Bates, um, you know, who's running the, the lock pick village out here, is very involved in the community, um, you know, and, and he's, been, he's been to so many events, great resource if you want to ask, and he's got two kids, right? So <laughs> he knows exactly, you know, what, what works with the little ones, and they, they all uh, um, uh, are, are very good at picking locks. So I've met his kids, it's, it's amazing. So um, one of the other things, social engineering, right? So imagine your kid walking up to uh, a big burly goon at DEF CON, and asking him to sing row, 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 the boat. row, row, row your boat, right? Uh, and then while you film it so that you can provide it as uh, evidence <laughs> so that they can get on to the next challenge. Those sorts of things, right? Uh, interacting with people that are, I mean, they're kind of staged to know that, okay, well, you know, kids are going to come up to you and ask you to do some things. And some of the goons are just like, nope, you know, and they're, they're out, right? But then, you know, every once in a while you find somebody who's, 
maybe off off duty or whatever, and they're just they're a little bit happier, right? Um, if anybody knows the goons at DEF CON, they're not known as being a friendly group. But. Um, lots of logic puzzles, word puzzles, things like that. Um, uh, example would be they had to choose a list. Um, they had to list off like thir I think it was thirteen words, and then they had to make six sentences out of those words. And that was the challenge to unlock the clue to go to the next challenge, right? Um, and uh, um, cutting out shapes, um, uh, different, different shapes, and having to form them into, I can't remember what the puzzle type is called, but form it in, I've got a picture, but um, they form it into a, uh, a, a larger shape, but they have to figure out the geo shapes, how they fit together, kind of like a puzzle, I guess, but... Um, but yeah, and the other thing, you can't help, which again, especially with the crypto stuff was really hard. <laughs> um, so this is, this is them um, working on that first cipher. I've got a video. And what I want to point out here is, I mean, there's not a designated area where you're doing this, right? You're in the middle of DEF CON. The, the, the foot traffic's right behind there. Now the hope is that at Caesars, the conference area is going to be a lot better. Um, because I'll be honest, the conference area kind of blew at, uh, at uh, the valleys. And there was just lots of small hallways and people were, you know, between the sessions, it was really, really crowded and then there's nobody there. And you're trying to set up to find spaces to work was not the easiest. Um, you know, here they're working on the, the, um, another uh, cipher challenge. There's the, uh, the cutout puzzles. You can see there's kind of a, uh, a helicopter. And, you know, the one on the left, we're still in the hall there, just at a table. The one on the right, that's the chill out room at DEF CON. So, you know, I mean, there's, they're in the middle of the conference. So I guess one of the things that I really liked about this is they feel like they can see part of the conference, but it's, it, you know, you're there, you're supervising them. You know, you can help guide if need be. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it's a very... Uh, it's a very interactive experience with the rest of the conference, um, for better or worse, I guess. Uh, you know, this, this one on the left is the lockpick village. Um, uh, they had to pick a lock, um, and inside um, the, the, the case was uh, some twine and uh, some cups, and then they used those cups to communicate with uh, a hidden volunteer uh, and uh, give a code word to get more of the puzzle, you know, the old telephone type thing. Um, uh, that was in the, the lockpick village area. And I just happened to, to be there when Lonnie picked his lock, the famous, like, what, less than two second lock that he picked at DEF CON. Um, then they had to do uh, uh, ASL, American Sign Language, um, which, which my daughter took on herself and she's like, I can do this. And so they had, again, kind of a crypto challenge, but it was all ASL stuff. Um, the, the, on the right, we're back out in kind of a, a, a hallway area, um, uh, and that was, um, that was the logic puzzle where they talked about, like, okay, if Bob bought, you know, the yellow crayons and, you know, you know, there was another person who bought five pink crayons and just, you know, go through that logic process of elimination, um, you know, where you've got, five different examples that they all bought different, you have to identify who bought how many crayons and what color, right? Um, or it was candy or something, right? But it's one of those logic puzzles and that gives them, you know, once they solve that, they can present that and then they're presented, you know, then they're given the next clue, right? The next, the next thing to do. This was, this was the breaking moment, right? So we started at 9 a.m., about three o'clock, they got to the visionaire. Visionaire is a, uh, uh, an old crypto puzzle, but it involves using um, a, uh, what's called a tabula recta. So you can kind of see it there on the right-hand side under the paper. But it's, it's, it's tough to, to figure out. Um, and they had instructions. You know, they had kind of what it was. And when you see the tabula recta, you kind of know what you're dealing with. Um, but you use a code word and you repeat the code word over and over, over on the cipher, um, and you correspond the, the, the cipher text and the code letter, and it gives you the corresponding clear text, right? Um, 
I'm paraphrasing it, but um, they, the problem is, is if you, if, you, if you move your paper while you're working on it, you end up with the wrong letters. And this, this was tough. I saw, I saw a couple other kids in other groups crying. Okay, <laughs> I mean, this was tough. I called up my wife, I'm like, I don't know what to do. You know, we haven't eaten yet, uh, it's three o'clock. She's like, have, get, have them get up and do jumping jacks. And, and I mean, because we were so focused on this, this mental thing that the physical contrast, my wife's a, a preschool teacher, right? So she, she just, the physical contrast of getting these kids up and just doing jumping jacks right in the middle of the, of the this was near the um, um, Tamper Evidence Village. So you can see Tamper Evident people in the background there. Um, you know, it, it, it was, I didn't care at that point, right? I was hungry too. I was kind of, <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was good, but it got them focused again, right? And they got through it and nobody cried on our team. It was a big deal. <laughs> um, then they moved on to um, some, some manipulative challenges. And in the theme of, of DEF CON last year, which was Rise of the Machines, the end was creating a robot. So they had bought these really cool snap-on uh, robot um, uh, sets that the kids would, would build. And um, then they had to run the robot through a, uh, a challenge. You can see on the left there, it's like a robotic remote control challenge. And uh, I'll, I'll come back to that, that image on the right because that was a really cool moment. Um, here's my daughter making a, making a try at the, uh, the robot. So they had to go through without hitting anything. So she has to reset now. But I mean, you know, at this point it's, it's six o'clock at night and the kids are, they're really, really, they, they had fun, but they're tired. They're hungry. Um, uh, come back to this because, um, my daughter's teammate really, really wanted an SE challenge coin. That was her goal, was to get a challenge coin. She got one in one of the years past, and uh, the poor thing, they traveled, and it was in a bit in her luggage, and her luggage got lost, and she lost her challenge coin, which, if anybody knows, getting a challenge coin is a huge trophy, right? A huge takeaway, but then losing it is even worse, right? So, so um, that was a big thing for her, and she went back, she's like, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna ask Chris, because they weren't the first team to finish, and only the first team to finish got the trophy. She's like, I'm gonna go back and ask, I don't care. So they went back and they asked, and, and um, Michelle, who was helping run the, 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 the kids' CTF, came up and she's like, these girls, you, know, you, got, you got the youngest girl here, they didn't cry, they worked as a team the whole time, they really, they deserve a challenge for it. So, They got a challenge coin. So, so yeah, so that's my daughter with the challenge coin, getting her picture with her partner and, and Chris. So, <clears throat> so what can you do to get your kid ready? You, all right, so you, you listen to me talk, you're like, you know, that guy Nibble, he's on to something here, let's do this. Um, tabletop crypto, uh, definitely a big thing. Um, crypto challenges, there's some great books that are crypto challenges geared towards kids. Um, you know, we can chat after, I can make some recommendations on that, but Caesar Ciphers, uh, Visionaire, uh, uh, I've got, um, that's a picture of the paper Enigma, if you want to play with that, I've got that, uh, which was developed by this amazing guy, uh, Mike Koss, um, uh, MIT graduate, works for Google now. Um, lock picking, another great way to get your kid ready. Um, it's an awesome way, if you have a lock picking set and you've been thinking about buying a new one, because you want like those new wavy, wavy rakes from Tool or something, buy them, give your kid your old lockpick set, get a generational lockpick, um, you know, lock set that, um, you know, with a, a single pin, a double pin, a triple pin, those sorts of things. Um, games and puzzles. These are a great way to kind of get kids thinking uh, outside the box critically. Uh, one that, that I always bring up that people are like, really? Um, uh, Uno is a fun, easy game to pick up, but if you read beyond just the, 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 the regular directions of Uno, cheating is encouraged in Uno. I mean, what's more hacker mentality than that, right? <laughs> in my mind. So I, I love Uno, and, and if you have friends that are interested, do it with friends. Encourage each other, right? And if you want to meet more like-minded kids, 
Uh, we have Hacker Camp Kids. So last year was our first year doing Hacker Camp Kids. Um, if anybody doesn't know, Hacker Camp is uh, the, in, the idea of the guy on the left closest to the camera, Sobit. Um, he had this idea, I want to do a CTF in the middle of the woods on a generator. And I was like, you know what? That's a great idea. Let's do it. That sounds, you know, so much fun. So we've done it four years now. Um, no, three years now, excuse me. This will be the fourth year. Um, but last year, uh, I was like, you know what? I want to do a kid's track because we weren't having all the people come up that we thought we could because, you know, we've got families. And coming out on the weekend without your families, going camping, not always, not always the easiest, right? So we did a kid's track. We had games. We had lock picking. We had all those things. And we're doing it again this year. Uh, so so um, definitely, uh, if you want a good, good way to uh, meet some like-minded people and have your kids get involved in these sorts of exercises, that's a great way to do it. So uh, it's up by Strawberry. So um, uh, yeah, uh, hackercamp.net, I believe is the, but yeah, uh, talk to me after I can get you the, the info on Hacker Camp. So it's, uh, it's the third Saturday in June, third Friday and Saturday in June. So the 23rd, 24th, we're doing it this year. So, all right, and I hope to see you at DEF CON.